Hi everybody, it's Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love and I'm here today to talk about vision loss in our dogs and cats. Um, as our pets get older, we're gonna notice a lot of different changes and one thing we hear often is that my dog is starting to not see as well, maybe tripping over some things, maybe the cat can't find its food bowl anymore. So I wanted to talk to you about um, some reasons why this happens and, and also ways to help manage and, and deal with the pet that's got some vision impairment. So first off is why are our pets having these, this vision loss? And so what are some of the causes? First off, um, uh, there are some diseases out there like glaucoma, sorry, glaucoma, um, retinal degeneration, some, some side effects from diabetes. So there's some, some diseases that our pets will get that really should be seen to first and make sure that we keep that under control. So for instance, diabetes, and my own dog, Sarissa, had diabetes, and so she was blind um, because of this. And so I, you, know, you wanna make sure that, that the diabetes is, is managed first, and then if there's something that we can do for the blindness, um, then, then we might want to. So for her, she actually um, did get glaucoma and, so, um, and some other problems, and, and so we had to have her lenses removed, and so an ophthalmologist, a veterinary specialist, uh, did that and she saw fine afterwards. So it was a, a big a big problem for about a year And then I, I decided to actually get it fixed So there are some times where we can we can fix some things and so um, the most important thing is to make sure that we we Make sure that we address any underlying causes that can be addressed So like diabetes another reason why our pets can have some vision impairment is because of high blood pressure so if I hear a kitty cat meowing a lot at night meow, that kind of sound, I will always ask to check their blood pressure because uh, increase in blood pressure, and this goes for dogs and cats and, and even us, can, um, can damage the retina. So we wanna make sure that we, that we test for that. And there is also some, some hereditary diseases that could happen in our pets. Um, so there's uh, retinal degeneration that happens, and there's also some, some breed predisposition. So there are certain breeds like spaniels, um, basset hounds, huskies that are prone to some vision, vision impairment or some diseases. So your veterinarian can help, can help look at, at, at some of the causes. But um, the other causes can be trauma, so they could have some, some, um, some damage to the eye, an infection, and then there is just old age. And so uh, we often see this in our, in our older pets where they'll have that gray eye look. And um, two of the main reasons for this is is one is that that lens that's in our eye that's super important to vision, it actually um, is layers of protein. And as we age, our layers of protein keep, keep forming on that lens. And so it's similar to like an onion. So if you imagine the, ring, the, the layers of an onion keep growing and growing, well over time, that, that onion, if you will, would get larger. But if you think about our eye, the lens which is inside our eye is actually in, dare I say, a ball of goo. And so this lens is in this ball of goo, so there's no room for it to grow. And so it just gets hard, harder, so the lens gets hardened. And we'll see that nuclear sclerosis, those are big words for just this lens hardening. And um, there's, there's nothing that we will do for that. There's, um, you know, typically it's, it's a slow progressing problem. And you'll see their eyes turning a little bit hazy. This is different than cataracts. And so cataracts, which is, um, Often that we'll see in, in, in pets, just they'll get cataracts or because of certain diseases like diabetes, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and so uh, it, it, can be, it can be confused between cataracts. And, and so we wanna make sure that you have your veterinarian check this out. So if it's just nuclear sclerosis, um, they, will, they will start to decrease their vision, particularly at night or dusk time, right? Or so early morning when it's not so light out. So we wanna make sure that, um, that we kind of keep an eye on, on when they're having some struggles. The other old age problem that we'll see is corneal edema. And so if you ever see that also a, a, a gray look to their eyes, but it's covering like their whole eye, that's uh, typically corneal edema. And what that is, the cornea is basically the covering of the eye, like the outer layer, let's say, of, your, of the, the, the ball of goo. <laughs> and um, the body likes to keep that at a certain hydration point. And so there's all these little cells and things that, that, are, that are working to keep it not too wet and not too dry. Well, well that, those cells don't operate so well when they get older, and so edema, so it'll keep it a little bit too wet, so edema will form inside that cornea. And um, it just gives them more of a, of a hazy look, not only what you look at them, but for their outside view. So it's hard for them to see because of this haziness, if you can imagine. So um, 
So the decline that happens in, in our pets with vision typically is a, is a slow progress. So, so we might see that they struggle again, like at night, like I mentioned, or early in the morning. And it can though lead to, to complete vision loss over time. And is this a concern? And I would say absolutely a concern. Um, but but what, it, what I wanna make sure that you guys um, have the tools to do is keep them protected. And that's what I love to talk about in almost all my Facebook Lives is, is how can we manage that pet in the home? And for blindness, it's about keeping them you know, safe because they're um, tooling around, they get lost, they might be, um, you know, the gate might be open and they, get, and they get lost and they get confused. Now you add on hearing loss, you add on cognitive dysfunction, and you add on some anxiety issues and they, they can get pretty stressful. And I know a lot of our pets that are already with anxiety issues because of cognition, you add on vision and it just escalates it. And so then they'll have maybe more panting and pacing at night and things like that. So what are some um, management tips? And so I've, I've got some lists down for me. Um, first off, like I said, is to keep them safe. Now, how can we do that? One thing we have to think about is, is everybody else in the house? So other pets in the house, um, or, or children, particularly toddlers, that it's hard to communicate what's going on with the pet. And so if they're, if they're approaching that, that pet that has vision issues and it startles, it startles that, that pet, um, they might snap at that, at that toddler. And so I see that often where our pets, especially ones that are painful from a little arthritis and they don't see somebody coming and somebody pets them, their, their reaction is to snap. So they don't want to do that. They don't want to hurt their family members, but they also get a little bit startled. So making sure that you approach safely, that, that you has a, your pet has enough time to just process that somebody's in the area, and also making noise. A lot of times the hearing, hearing is usually the last sense to go, and so they could still hear. We may have to talk a little bit louder, um, but you wanna make sure that they hear you, so either clapping or, or, or having bells put on other pets, so that way they can hear the bell sound when they're, when they're approaching. So we just wanna be make sure everybody's super safe. Now along the, the lines of safety is, is making sure that the home is safe. I live in South Florida and we have a lot of um, in-ground pools and I sadly have to say that so many pets, especially when they're older with cognitive dysfunction or blindness, fall in pools. And so this is something I want to warn everybody about. Um, just last week we had somebody call because their pet had died from falling in the pool. and. You might have um, maybe your teenage teenager come home from school and it's before you get home from work and they let your pet out you know in the backyard to to go to the bathroom and then they and then they fall in the pool so just making sure everybody in the house knows to to, to be careful of, of of dangers like a pool or, or an intercoastal or a waterway or a lake or something like that because it's very difficult for them to get out and then they get panicked and, 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 and frantic. So other dangers in the house, what about steps? And now, of course, a, a long stairwell is, is something to be concerned about, but even one step, if they have trouble navigating that and they fall and they bonk their, their chin or something like that, that can cause a lot of damage. My Samoyed, my Sarissa, who had um, vision issues, she, she used to fall over or trip over parking curbs in a parking lot. So when I'd go for a walk and I wouldn't realize it and she would trip over that because she couldn't see it. So we want to make sure stairs in the house are well protected um, or keeping them safe and away from those stairs. So I always uh, talk about uh, baby gates, which are you know readily, easily to find, but they can, be, they can be a struggle to walk over, to walk through, they're not cheap, and you might need a ton of baby gates, right? So I always like to talk about tension rods. And so the tension rods that you see up in the, up in the curtains can be used. Um, so, Sorry, one second please, I have to pause. And you're gonna come with me out here. So I wanted to just show you guys, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, I had, to, I had to do a little bit of a, of a, of a moving. So, um, all right, so we're keeping them safe. So the, the stairwells, I wanna, I wanna be concerned about. So the tension rods, I wanted to show you guys. You see this tension rod? across the back so um so that tension rod holds that curtain and so you could use that tension rod against in stairs uh in doorways things like that all right so if you get the point so i've got a tension rod for you guys um on a link that we're going to be doing and or posting for you guys with some tension rods so Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I hear a lot of noise behind me that you guys can hear. So I really, I apologize if the sound is kind of loud. Um, okay, so I've got my little cheat sheets down here of other things I want to 
talk about. Okay. So, um, so there's the tension rods. There's um, now scenting is actually still very important to pets. So as they get older, they um, they might not be able to see, but they can still smell. So did you know that in pets and dogs, there are three million smell receptors in uh, uh, for the dog, and a third of the dog's brain is dedicated to scenting. And so making sure they can still smell. So having your scented items around the house, if you have a shirt or something that smells like you, there's also something called trackers. So you can, um, and we're gonna put a link to trackers. And so the trackers can have little oil scent glands, so that way you can place these in, in areas that um, the pet may be able to go to. So uh, maybe near their food bowl or their litter box or things like that because they could still smell really well. So so having that available is also, um, is also something something to, to look into. Now, talking to your pets, believe it or not, they still can hear most of the time. So keeping them, um, you know, occupied and, and having fun and, and some and some games with just, you know, some verbal cues, but also some scenting games, right? So they like to be with you. So there's a lot of games that we can have with your with the scenting. So we're going to put a ton of different products um, linking. I see that that already happened. Uh, as happening. So I just want you guys to, to make sure that you're protecting these guys that have vision, vision issues. When you're going for a walk, there's a lot of harnesses that you can say that, that they're blind. So that way people don't, people don't pet on them or, or touch them or, or get them scared. And so, um, so these are just some, some simple ideas and I'll post more as I think of them. And please, if you have a vision impaired dog, you know, it doesn't mean that, that we can't still have fun with them and them going out for walks and things like that. So, um, but I just wanna make sure that they're safe. So anyway, I hope this is super helpful. Um, and if you guys ever have a suggestion of a Facebook Live you would like me to do, just let me know. Thanks, bye.